Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee, back with another White Ball Talk, and I'm not having a rant this time, I'm not trying to alarm you, but I want to talk to you about lithium-ion batteries, because lithium-ion batteries are everywhere. They say they're like rats, you're never more than a couple of metres away from a lithium-ion battery. I've got one in my pocket at the moment, so the radio mic, there's also one in the camera, I'm in a shed which has got power tools, there are loads around here, loads of chargers. Like most people, lithium-ion batteries are part of my life. A few years ago, we did have problems with lithium-ion, batteries spontaneously combusting things like laptops catching fire mobile phones catching fire i think samson had a problem with their mobile phone i think at one point they didn't even allow you to put certain mobile phones on airplane flights because of this problem happily they've solved that and it all comes down to having sophisticated management of the cells to stop them overheating to stop them overdrawing the problem really arises because we all know that you know you go to buy a new battery like my camera battery for example if i go to buy one from the manufacturer it's 150 quid or something stupid and then I look on eBay or Amazon or somewhere like that and it's only 30 quid an aftermarket battery has that battery got the same kind of safeguards as the 150 quid one one would hope so and I think in some cases they're even better so I wouldn't say that a cheap battery is always a bad battery but what I would say is if you're using aftermarket chargers you can tell sometimes whether things are cheaply made don't just leave that thing on charge overnight because that's where a lot of the accidents are happening. I know somebody who works on insurance and he's doing an awful lot of fire damage work at the moment. The overwhelming cause of fires nowadays is batteries, lithium ion batteries, chargers going off. And he told me one incident of a guy who was restoring a classic car, actually a Ferrari. He'd spent years restoring this car. His pride and joy, he had his electric drill battery on charge in the garage where he was restoring this car and you know what happened caught fire burn the ferrari to bits and this kind of thing is happening all the time you probably know somebody who's had some kind of house fire or close call with a lithium ion battery there's a kid down the road who had one it was a paintball gun that he had and he put it on charge but he left the charger under the duvet for one reason or another just slung the duvet on top of it you know what kids are and of course the thing cooked and it got too hot and it burst into flames and luckily they were in the house otherwise it probably would have taken the house with it and they were able to go up there throw the whole thing out the window and save the house and save any problem now that's a great thing to do if you look out the window there's nobody there and you can throw it out safely fantastic what you don't want to do is be breathing those fumes in from that fire because those fumes are a deadly cocktail of gases very very dangerous they look innocuous they look like steam but in actual fact they've got so many bad things in them even just breathing them in once can do irreparable damage can kill you or leave you with a life-changing injury if you see that smoke coming out the battery just stay away if you can get that battery out of the house great but if not then let the experts deal with it now when we come to experts obviously we're talking about the fire brigade here and the fire brigade are very very keen to educate the public on the dangers of lithium-ion batteries so first of all leaving them on charge overnight is not a great idea leaving your laptop plugged in or your mobile phone plugged in downstairs if it's a smoke alarm you've got a fighting chance but those batteries even a little 1.2 AA battery if you puncture that battery or it overheats can go up like a firework it's very very frightening to see it i mean they whiz around like they were a jumping jack or something like that please if you've got that be careful with it and if you've got an aftermarket battery or an aftermarket charger take extra care to make sure that you don't leave it on charge unattended while you go to bed or something like that and if you do hear a bang take notice because if those batteries explode they will continue to burn they don't just burn and peter out like an ordinary fire it's an awful lot of energy pent up in that battery we're getting more and more powerful batteries my electric drills now got 54 volts of electric drill there that's a lot of power and of course what's the most powerful battery you're likely to come across now is one in an electric vehicle and therein lies another problem because if those vehicles are involved in a collision if those battery cells are damaged as i say if they're punctured or anything like that if you put a nail through one of those cells it would blow up so if it's involved in a car crash then that can cause a very big fire and a fire which the fire brigade find very difficult to put out 
They're all working on systems and ways of doing it. But at the moment, the Dutch Fiber Go, for example, have got a huge, great lorry, which is full of water, like a massive, great bath, if you like. They crane the car up and they just plunge it into the water and they leave it there. Because even when they spray thousands and thousands of gallons of water on these car fires, they just go away thinking that it's out and it spontaneously combusts again. So it's very, very difficult indeed to manage. And even on a small scale, even when you're talking about the kind of battery you might put into an electric drill, if that thing starts burning and you think you've put the fire out, don't just walk away and leave it because the likelihood is it will burst into flames again and even again after that. In America, they had a factory fire with lithium ion batteries in it. They couldn't put it out. They tried everything to put it out, spraying water on it. They were doing all kinds of things. And in the end, they went and got 20,000 tons of Portland cement and poured it on top of this bank of batteries. There's the problem that these batteries, they produce their own oxygen. They produce their own hydrogen from within the chemicals which are inside it. As they're burning, you get this runaway condition where they just burn and burn and burn. And it's like the beast that wouldn't die. It is hard to put out. There are specialist fire extinguishers around, vermiculite ones that you can use. So if you've got lithium ion batteries around, and you're concerned about it, you can get a special fire extinguisher, which basically just covers it in a kind of mud. But you could do that. You could pour sand on top of it or anything else just to stop the gases. But be careful of those gases. You do not want to breathe those gases in. So all the big manufacturers of the power tools and the mobile phones and everything else would have done impact tests on their batteries. They would have all given them rigorous testing. So if you drop them hopefully the battery will withstand a few knocks but don't be complacent about that treat them with care and hopefully if you look after them they will look after you one of the dangers as i say is batteries left on charge overnight and look at this guy he's got electric scooter here's burst into flames in the middle of the night and that's going to be happening a lot now because one of the problems with electric scooters electric bikes and things like that is that if you have a collision and the battery's in a vulnerable position it may get a knock and if it does get a knock when you charge that battery up again charge it up somewhere where you can see what's going on charge it up outdoors if you can but just make sure that you monitor it during the first cycle of its recharging just to make sure that nothing untoward has happened and avoid heat on batteries always avoid heat the better chargers have got a fan in them on the larger capacity batteries and they will keep the battery cool as it's charging the cheaper chargers tend not to have that fan that's where they save a bit of money so you have to be aware that if that battery is charging up it could overheat if it gets above 60 degrees centigrade you're in trouble now if you look at a dashboard of a car for example and that can very very easily get to more than 60 degrees centigrade in the sun on a hot summer's day and if you've got a battery lying on your dashboard or anywhere else even on the front seat of your van and that gets hot then that can blow up and it will take the van with it i'm roger bisbee i hope you found that interesting i hope you found that useful and as they say stay safe <laughs>